Greetings ladies and gentlefish and welcome back to another one of my games. <laughs> Yay! So don't expect, you know, 20 million damage and all that jazz. Um, <laughs> this is a game that some of you might actually be getting a sense of deja vu over because I think I played this on a stream many moons ago. So we are here in the M4190GF. For those who don't know, uh, periodically, Wargaming have grand finals for their competitive scene. Anyway, um, and there'll often be a tank that is available during that period of time. This was one of them. It is, contrary to what you might think from the um, fact that it's an M41, this is actually in the German, part of the German tech tree. It's not in the tech tree because it's a premium, but you know what I mean. Um, essentially, it's an American M41 Walker Bulldog with the 76mm gun ripped out, thrown on the scrap heap, and a German 90mm plonked in the turret. Um, and it's here at tier 8. So what you get, essentially, is a light tank at tier 8 that hits relatively hard. I mean, it's a 90mm gun with 240 alpha. And of particular note... Oh, hello, Mr. VK. That's a bad place for you to be. Of particular note are the high explosive rounds. In common with some of the other German 90mm guns, you get pretty decent HE uh, rounds here. So 320 alpha from these high explosive rounds, which is what you would expect from a 90mm gun, but 102 penetration. Um, which is interesting, and it means... Oh, let's just take hideous advantage of this. It means, for example, that if you find yourself in engaging other light tanks, you can actually... Oh, that Tiger got wrecked you can actually uh, go through most of them like a hot knife through butter with those HE rounds. Just don't hit any spaced armour, like tracks and whatnot. Anyway, we're here on Glacier. It, or Glacier, however you want to pronounce it. Both of them now sound wrong to me because I've said both too many. There's an LHMTV, poor little swine. And um, this is a tier 9 match, so we're just going to see what we can do. Um, and... This game is going to be quite a long one, but we've managed to get off to a pretty good start. Combination of spotting and assistance damage on those guys on the other side of the mound here in the middle means that we're up to 2,500 assistance and 1,200 of our actual damage done um, here. Now, the rest of the game is going to slow down a little bit uh, from my perspective, but even so, that's a nice start. And really, if you're in a light tank on this map, to some degree or other, you're probably going to end up playing this sort of central mound because, well, what other options have you got? If you go to the northwest up in the sort of A1 corner where you can see that 50 TP and defender, then, well, you come across a 50 TP and a defender and you regret your life choices. That was a low damage roll. Ah, well, never mind. And you can see here I'm abusing my camo because I'm in a light tank. Um, haha. So that means I'm going to have pretty good camouflage Ugh, and should just be able to plunk away at the side armour of this 50 TP. Unfortunately, um, the 90mm gun here, the penetration is okay, but the accuracy is not great. Penetration on the standard rounds is 182, that will go up to 250 if you want to fire heat. Um, but uh, heat on side armour with tracks at long range, that just doesn't sound like a good idea to me. Armour piercing is fine in that situation. Oh, there goes our Type 61. Um, and in that scenario, like I said, we were just taking advantage of our camouflage. Oh, bye bye, 50 TP, isn't that a shame? And we're actually up to 3.7k assistance now, which is nice. And what, 1700 of our own damage done? So I'm trying to keep these guys lit. Oh, hello, LHMTV. Oh, he might have spotted me. Oh, Defender has a derpy gun and missed. Jolly good. Now, I'm trying to keep the Defender and the 50TP and, if he ever pokes out again, the E75 lit and spotted so that our friendly, well, I guess it's Maotian E75 and Waffle Thrower can do something about them. Both Waffle Throwers, to be fair, and the Arctic, basically, so they can do something about them. Now, I was saying there aren't many other places to go in a light tank on this map, like your other option, apart from the northwest corner up there, is to go down to the southeast corner where we have a whole cavalcade of tanks. But again, you're in a similar kind of problem. You put yourself in a corridor engagement against tanks that uh, have more armour and bigger guns than you, and it's just it's just not a good plan. Ooh, there's my counterpart. It's just not a good plan um, in a light tank, frankly. 
So the central region is kind of the only area you can play, certainly toward the beginning of the game anyway. Now you can play it in a variety of different ways. You can go up where that LHM TV is, for example. I chose not to, um, but you can. Now if memory serves when I played this game, I don't think I played Glacier much, so I was that that's the reason I didn't play Leopard Prototype behind me, potentially. That's the reason I opted not to play this game particularly aggressively. Um, because I, if memory serves, I just didn't know the map that well. Um, but anyway, so let's have a look at the situation. The scoreline's 4-3. Um, there's a Leopard Prototype for the enemy team on the ridge, and he's going to have support to some degree. Although, there's only one TD left on the enemy team in the form of that tier 9 Waffle Thrower. Uh, prototype there. Oh, please don't shoot me. Please don't shoot me. Please don't shoot me. Oh, the LHM TV shoots me instead. Well, at least he's got a smaller gun and a terrible reload. Um, Darren damages my turret there. Fix the turret because... I just don't want it damaged. Makes life really awkward if you're trying to get into a close range uh, engagement with anyone. And I'm just trying to think here, how can I best be useful to my team? I don't really want to be fighting against that leopard prototype. Oh, I was hoping he would keep going back. Oh, now, of course, he goes back. Um, I don't really want to fight a leopard prototype, especially when he's going to have TD support. Don't really feel the need to go over and support our TVP and, and T44 and whatnot. And there's an E75. Huh. He decided to go through the middle. Fair beans. Have a blind shot there to see if I can deal with that LHM TV. And I believe I decide in the end that, well, let's support the winning flank. So, like, the middle portion of this game is quite slow. Like I said, the game slows down after the first bit, if we're going to be honest. And I spend a little bit of time trying to work out what I think is going to be my best play. So... The Maushin has moved forward, so I'm not going to get any spotting done on that VK or anything like that. And I believe eventually I come to the conclusion that, well, I've got most of my hit points. Oh, I'm not going to do what I thought I was going to do. Fair enough. I do try and take a blind shot at that likely position of that waffle thrower. Someone finds an M4A1 Revelarise. Now, I was wondering if it's worth, at this point, just blitzing up and killing that LHM TV. He's a one-shot, assuming he's still up there. Um, and that would kind of free up that side of the map a little bit for us. We might be able to put shots down into the side armour of that VK. Because at the moment, we're staying alive, which, you know, can be useful in and of itself. Don't get me wrong, it's better than getting yourself killed. But we're not really doing anything. Blind shot? Yeah. No dice. It's a bit of a shame. Scoreline is 7-7, so this is a close game. I really don't want to poke that E75 or the Leopard or anyone like that because it just feels like it's going to end poorly for me. That's a guy who appears to have tipped his tank over. Was that our Type 61, I think? Oh, well. As it turns out, because our medium tanks are actually pushing through, that's going to give the enemy team other problems. And I'm wondering if I can be cheeky on this Skoda... Uh, he's probably pulled forward out of the way there, but I go for the shot anyway. Looking back on this with hindsight, I know hindsight's 2020 and all that. But uh, I think if I were doing this again, I'd have just pushed on that LHM TV and killed him. And then worried about the rest of the game. Because I've spent a long time in the middle of this game not doing much, and that's something I've tried to do... Um, a lot more recently because I have limited periods of time to play this or any other computer game I've ooh, E75 has moved that's good to know I have therefore tried to make the most of it I suppose so that includes if you're looking to improve um, oh, is that LHM TV no he's not gonna nail me if you're looking to improve that includes really looking at what it is you did in a previous match and going, all right, well, could I have done that any better? Did what I did there lead to any problems that could have been avoided? Now, the reason I believe, if memory serves, I didn't go and deal with that LHM TV was that I was worried about the E75 just plonking one into my side as I drove past him. And the M41 Walker Bulldog, I know this is the German version, not the American version, but the Bulldog has a very dubious ammo rack. And uh, you really just don't want to get shot in the tank. So, where's that LHM TV? 
There he is. Oh, and after all that, he'd actually put himself on his side. So he was no threat to man nor beast. Fine. Anyway, we pick up the kill on him. Um, so yeah, I've been trying to kind of... Especially if something goes wrong, or if I die, or if we lose. Really try and think of, okay, is there anything I could or should have done differently and better there? And in this game... I think you could make a case. I'm trying to choose my words carefully there. I think you could make a case for saying I dithered too much in the middle portion of this game. Um, and that's quite common among players who are respectable, as in they know the game mechanics and all that, but they're not amazing. And that's I think that's definitely the category that uh, I could happily be put into. There goes the Skoda. Um, you know, you play the initial portion of the game, and then when that runs dry... You're kind of like, well, what do I do now? Where should I go now? And if you don't have that sense and that direction, you can end up with the middle portion of your game being somewhat lacklustre, which is what's happened here. But anyway, that's what I've been trying to do lately. Back to the game in, in hand. I switched to these high explosive rounds because I was thinking, well, let's deal with um, the SPG or let's deal with the waffle thrower. The waffle thrower's dead. We can still go and deal with the artillery, though. And the Revelerise is being pressurised by our TVP. Now in a direct fight between those two, it's probably going to come down to, let's be honest, who's got the most uh, hit points. HE round into the artillery there. Not enough to kill him, but enough to really make him regret his life choices. And that picks up the kill on the guy. And now it's time to go and deal with... The Revelerise, as it turns out, he was able to take out our TVP. Now, there's an Object 430 who's going over to deal with this fellow as well. But thankfully, we're faster. And at this stage in the game, screw taking hits. I'm just going for murder, 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 kill, kill, murder. And you could actually make a case here for saying I should load high explosive because the hull of the M4A1 is still a Tier 5 Sherman. So you're looking at effective... Oh, no, I take a hit. Effective armour thickness. Oh, I could have just gone for the ram there. Oh, well, never mind. Um, effective armour thickness of maybe about 80 mil. But as it is, we pick up the kill regardless. And that is the game. But uh, as it was, uh, sorry, as I was saying, HE could also be a bit unreliable. I went for AP. It worked out fine. We picked up the kill. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the post game stats for this one. So, that ended up being enough for Ace Tanker, Spotter, Duelist, Fire for Effect. No super shiny medals, but um, a few ribbons there. And actually, I was surprised that ended up being enough for an Ace, if I'm going to be honest. Um, but to be fair, I suppose we did uh, damage to sort of Tier 9 tanks a lot. Um, you know, one, two, three, four of the tanks that we damaged and, and did uh, were spotting for and whatnot were a higher tier than us, and the other four were an equal tier to us. So, I guess perhaps it shouldn't come as a huge surprise, but uh, I just I, I wasn't expecting it. Uh, due in no small part to that rather uninspiring uh, middle portion of the game. And once again, this is a screenshot. I don't know why these days I'm trying to click the tabs in screenshots. That's, that's not how screenshots work. Anyway, uh, 2,595 damage done, 3 kills, 1,313 base experience, which was fairly nice. Um, a couple of curious things looking at this particular rundown, I suppose. Uh, firstly, shout out to the enemy M4A1 Revelerise Wish Death. 3,230 damage and 3 kills from him in his tier 8. That's a good result, just not enough for the win there. And on our team, shout out to our tier 9 waffle thrower, Struner67, 3,500 damage from him is very nicely done. And now, curious, the object 430 on our team, he wasn't camping, I don't think. I was chasing, you know, I was trying to chase the kill on the M4A1 against him at the end, but he did zero damage in an object 430 top tier I'm, I'm just going to let that one hang because I don't have an answer for that oh well never mind I mean let's just run with it I'm not complaining um, thankfully in the end we were able to win but it does make me wonder that had I for example not had a good game that ended up being close in the middle portion like with the top tier still alive at the end having done zero damage 
Maybe that would have been a loss. Anyway, um, 24 shots fired, 15 hits, 13 pens. I was taking my a respectable number of blind shots there, to be fair. 2,595 damage done, 1,400 from more than 300 metres. The rest obviously closer. Two hits received. I'm in a light tank. I am bouncing anything. Two penetrations. Three enemy vehicles spotted, eight damage, three destroyed, 3,726 assistance damage, and 6.08 kilometers traveled, which isn't too bad. Um, it's quite a long way, let's be honest, but you're in a light tank, so meh. Um, running a standard account, so that was a 65,819 credit profit. Had I been running a premium account, that would, of course, been over 100,000. 103,769 uh, um, credits profit plus 11,385 in the personal reserve, or reserve stock, but standard account. So, none of those things, but still a respectable profit. And, nice amount of experience. So, yeah. Um, I believe that was the second game I played in the Black Dog on the stream, because people had requested it, because that wasn't my times 4 XP. Pretty sure the previous game had been decidedly uh, less good. Anyway. It is what it is. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that little outing there in a machine that you don't see all that often. Um, and if you did, feel free to catch some of my other videos and or subscribe to this here channel. You can support me on Patreon as well. There should be a link down in the description for you. And there should also be a few different bits and bobs uh, popping up for you to click on. Uh, at the end of this video. And as ever, I'm going to wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.